exercise, a lockdown bubble really has limitations for cyclists. It's barely worth even putting the outfit on, or is it? So this is where there's a real benefit that roads don't go as the kookaburra flies. So let's see if we can work out just how far I can actually go cycling within my 10K limit. Let's use GIS to check it out. The first thing I'm going to do is to search for Queensland Roads Spatial Data. So I'm going to find that, jump on in, and this is going to take me to QSpatial, which is a really cool place for being able to download, download lots of spatial information in Queensland. I'm going to download that data set. So let's have a look at what happens. Downloaded the data set. It comes as a zipped file, so you can see that just there. I'm going to right click on that, make sure that I extract all. Now, this is super critical to do that so that you're able to incorporate it into your GIS software. So now that I've got that, I'm going to open that up and I'm going to click that link because then I'm going to jump straight into ArcGIS and have a look at what we've got so far. So I know roughly where I live and at the moment we're saying that this is my 10k exercise bubble and you know it's okay but 10ks isn't very far so I want to know exactly how far I can go on the roads around the area. So let's go into add data. I'm going to add the data to the map and the quickest and easiest way to find that data set that I just downloaded is to paste it in there. I'm going to open it up and you can see the Queensland roads and tracks information. Now this is cool, but there's a little bit too much. So at this stage, what I want to do is just to chop it into my 10K bubble area. So that will give me information on the roads and tracks just within the area that I'm allowed to go to. So I'm gonna jump into the tools and the geoprocessing tool that I want to use today is Clip. So this acts like a cookie cutter and it's going to chop out those Queensland roads based on my 10k buffer. So let's just do that and make sure that it is going into the correct place. So we want to do the home buffer and let's give it the roads extension in there as well. Let's save that. When we run it, let's see what we get. It should pop up directly into our display, turn off the old one. And now here we go, we've got all the roads. Now, if I open the attribute table, because we know that the attribute table will be populated with the length of individual lines, this is a little bit tough here because one of the first things that I notice is that it's not in a projected coordinate system. So let's go and make sure that we get our roads into a coordinate system that is going to work for us to be able to effectively measure distance. So we're going to use the project tool and let's drop in our, our little roads and tracks here. And we're going to make sure that we've got this one dropping in the right place. So let's pop it up. Yes, that's all good. And we're going to call it the roads, um, but add reprojected to make sure that we know exactly what we've done along the way. Now, critically, we want to make sure that we're setting the output coordinate system. Now, luckily, I know that I set the output coordinate sy system correctly for my buffer. So I'm going to just use that buffer one there, and you'll be able to see that that is popping up as WGS84, and I know that that was set to zone 55 south as well on the UTM projection. So let's run that one and let's see what that pops up. So it shouldn't actually look any different. And that's great. It's looking exactly the same in my display. But this time when I look at my attribute table, I now have the shape length here in meters. Now this is really cool. So all I really need to do is to calculate the total length of all the roads within my 10K bubble. But I'm going to go just one little bit further just to make it a little bit neater because you'll be able to see that each road is actually made up of a number of different records. So if you zoom all the way in, you'll see that they, they're made up of really small segments. And I just want to make it a little bit tidier. And this will help me also find out how many roads I can go on as I go cycling. I'm going to jump into the tools. And this time I'm going to open up the dissolve tool. So here we go. I am going to dissolve my reprojected file. Again, just double checking that it's going into the right place, into the right geo database and adding the little bit of the operation that I'm adding there to the file name. Now this time I want to dissolve by the field street because that's where the name is in those individual streets. I'm going to run that tool and see what pops up. Now always good to double check in the attribute table that things have 
popped up correctly. Let's have a look. There's our shape length. And I can see that I now have a selection of 924 roads that I can go cycling on. Now, if I want to right click on that particular field, let's have a look at the statistics and see just how far I'm able to cycle. We look at the sum here and we can see it's 551,528 meters. So there we go. I've got a long, long way that I'm able to cycle within my 10K buffer limit. There you go, definitely worth putting on the outfit, wouldn't you say? See you outside.